you. Even a little cold. Yeah. Uh, she might be just on there. Very, very good. You can see the green down there. Okay, excellent. I think we're ready. All right. We'll call the meeting to order. And then our citizenship award. I don't think she is here tonight. I don't think she is, but I will read what Mr. Gardner wrote about her. Our citizenship. Uh, is Iris from uh, Iris is from is on my high school selection for the school board citizenship award for June. Iris is an outstanding student with a GPA over 4.0. Is currently the highest ranked student in the class of 2024. She's maintaining these grades despite constantly challenging herself with upper level classes. Iris is also a three sport athlete, excelling in cross country basketball and track. In addition to her academic and athletic ac accomplishments. Irish Iris is just a great person. She is friendly to her fellow students and quietly leads by example. She's a positive contributor to our leadership class and a member of several clubs. She's quite hardworking and truly exemplifies what it means to be an Elmira Falcon. So we will make sure Iris gets her student. Great. So we're going to all right, we'll move into the uh, public comment uh, portion of the meeting. We do have one person who has um, signed up to speak, and just so you know, you have three minutes, and we will put you off with. Three minutes, and you can try to finish up in that time. That'd be great. Great. Thank you. Go ahead. You can stand, whatever you like. <laughs> can I do this without uh, getting in through the glasses? Um, my name is Jolie Dugan. I live here in Benita, and, and uh, I have a daughter in the middle school. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to just thank uh, Jeff and Gordy and I stepped out here, but I wanted to thank both of them uh, for their service on the board. Uh, I am so much say that we'll be losing some very valuable board members, um, and I think it's unfortunate to lose both of you. Um, but I just wanted to, I guess, to express my gratitude. Uh, for example, you I don't know if Jeff is on flight or not, but <laughs> I don't think she is. Okay, but to her as well. Um, Second, um, as we go forward into the next school year, I would just like to urge the uh, board and Mr. Carpenter uh, to be thinking about how the district can address misinformation in our district if and when it occurs. Uh, unfortunately, there is a group of people who have spread some untrue things about our district, things such as that we're lacking parental rights uh, and transparency, that there are inappropriate literature in the schools, um, and that the schools are pushing personal agendas and ideologies. Uh, while I understand that the tendency um, probably is to want to just dismiss these things as a bit of nonsense from a small group of people, um, I would just note that this group has managed to convince over 1,200 other people that these claims may be true. And as a result, we are now listening to very valuable board members. Um, so if we do see this type of misinformation continue to be spread about our district, um, whether it's here at board meetings or elsewhere in the community, um, I would just urge the board and Gary uh, to take this seriously. Um, please don't just sweep it under the rug um, as the nonsense of a small group. Um, I would urge you to begin thinking about and uh, to looking into how the district can respond to or act to dispel such misinformation should we see it uh, escalate and begin to impact our district. Um, my hope is that it won't, and I'm hoping that we're going to have a productive school year where we can address uh, the, uh, some of these issues that we're having with performance and attendance. 
um, and that we can do that with the best interest of all students uh, in our district. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Move on to approval of the minute. Last month. Anyone see any corrections or anything that we need for action? I move that we approve the May 15th to 2020 meeting minutes as written. Do I second it? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion carries four to zero. Um, next up is our enrollment report. This is our June 1st enrollment report, so close to where we ended. Um, coincidentally, we ended up with the same number as we did last June, 1288. Um, I had to double triple. <laughs> uh, we were up and down in a few spots, but in the end, it was 1288. Um, but we were down 52 from our proposed budget. And last year we were down 100 from the proposed budget. So we were closer to our projected budgeted numbers this year, even though we are still down. Um, all I have on that. Or have you put these for fun? I don't. So I did notice that. Um, the NIDA continues to have, you know, on average, at least three more students the class size in, the class in, the, in classes. And I, I guess we're just going to have to figure out how to handle that sometime. Yeah, uh, consistently been about two. I think this 2.2 gap or 2.26 gap is as big as it was all year. It's been right around two. We do a few things to compensate that. They have a few more um, regular IA hours. Next year, they're going to have uh, an equivalent more based on total number of students, uh, title IA hours. Um, you know, a district our size of two elementary schools, it's impossible to be balanced. The only way we can ever be balanced is if we want to go to a K2 school or 3 5 school. Then having all of our kinders in one building, that's for four, four perfectly balanced rooms or five or six or whatever it is. Um, perfectly balanced fourth grade classrooms. In this model, the fact that we're within two, frankly, is kind of uh, astonishing. So we'll always be a little bit off when we, when we, you know, two is kind of about to win. If we start getting three or four difference per room, that's pretty significant. Um, we could look at transfer a teacher. Uh, a, a teacher uh, move equates to a little over one. Um, a loss in a game. So like one teacher move over to the other uh, building. Let's say we want to take a teacher from Elmira to move to any hit. They beat that either. The problem is that then at Elmira, it creates chaos with um, almost every grade being blended, yeah. which isn't good for kids and causes more issues. So definitely something we'll continue to monitor. And the other model is more difficult for parents with definitely more difficult for parents. Children. It's great, it's right. Yeah, I got four kids and there are four different schools, you know, <laughs> middle school, high school, both elementary schools. Uh, it isn't a, that is not a, you know, not it solves the problems, but it's certainly not a perfect solution. Do we have any rooms that a teacher could take in the need of? I have any idea. Okay. I don't. All right, any other questions? No. All right, uh, revenue and expenditure report. This is as of May 31st, so I'll have a final one next month for you guys. Um, we've received 102% of our operating revenue. Last year, we were at 104%, so fairly similar. Um, as far as expenditures goes, we are at 77%. Last year, we were at 72%, so a little bit higher, which we kind of anticipated just because we operated you know, fully this year more normal. Um, 
there you'll see there's a debit in the state school fund line, the 144,000. Um, and that's because I uh, did a journal entry to create a deferred revenue for that timber funds we received because they'll end up taking that back next year. So it's out of the picture now. So we have it. So when they do take it back, we have that money to put back into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, do you guys have any questions? I think there is anything else to up on there. Right. I move that we accept the uh, general fund revenue and expenditure report as written. I second it. We have a motion and a second to accept the um, general uh, fund revenue and expenditure as written. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries for the two. Okay, Mr. Carpenter. Um, let's see. I'll be quick, but I got several items to touch base on. A little later in the agenda, you approve, uh, we'll vote to approve the OSCA um, contract that we negotiated. Took a long time, but got it done. Um, I want to thank Jackie who participated in all the meetings as the board rep on there. Um, I think it's one that um, our folks are happy with and glad that that's finished. It's also the first time we got a, I've ever had a four year agreement. So I'll we'll do it again until spring of 27. Um, also, you know, something I've kept you informed of in our Friday update emails, but come to the conclusion on the three year agreement. Um, uh, adjusted their whole for next year, which was the last year, but even extended to another year. So next year we won't be bargaining any contracts. Uh, however, next year we will have the Westland Charter renewal. The end of their five-year contract is, is next year. Well, then it's probably a good thing that we aren't going to have other contracts. Yeah. Um, summer projects are going well. Um, lots of carpet. Using ESSER dollars project happening, main hallways, Benita, polished concrete rooms, um, getting ready to get some quotes in the middle school, possibly in this room. Um, classrooms at the middle school, the band and choir practice rooms. Um, so lots happening there. Also, Benita, a siding project. Uh, they're about two or three days into refinishing the high school gym floor, uh, and grandstand removal started today. Um, so lots happening there. Uh, legislative update for those of you, I think I might even forward this to you, but it's touched base on a few things. Legislator, the legislature uh, gaveled out yesterday at 4.26 p.m. There was lots of new um, legislation that will be impactful. I will touch base on a few of them. Uh, one is the early literacy um, grant. Not 100% sure how that's going to work. It's $90 million statewide and it requires a 25% a local match. Um, so it's something that, again, they just finalized all this language yesterday. It's going to take some time to dive in and how we're going to access that if we are, what we're going to use uh, that for. Um, the other, well, I guess one more thing to mention on that is we could get involved with those dollars. It's birth to third grade. So, you know, one thing that we're talking about considering is putting a little bit more money into, into some pre-K things, uh, help families. Parents have kindergartners that are a little stronger readers or that kind of thing. Um, abbreviated school day, 7 to 8, 19 was a big one. Um, it'll require some significant changes in the SPED world. I don't know that it will be too significant for us, but essentially if you have now if we had a kid um, in an out-of-district placement, which you know right now we have a dozen, 20, like 20. And, um, the minutes that if they're a third grader at an out-of-district placement, they need to be served the same amount of minutes that a third grader in their home district is served, which makes it very hard for those folks who have people from Crestville and Cottage Grove and Eugene and Springfield all on different schedules and different minutes. Uh, the other piece is, you know, occasionally we might have a need for a student um, in our district that's placed here to be on a shortened day for some reason. Well, now when you do that, it requires um, 
pay you monthly if the kid's on an IEP, a monthly IEP meeting um, to confirm that this is still the best placement, parents are in support of it. Um, exactly. But, so that bill is definitely going to have some impact. They reduced the middle school PE minute requirements. Not going to change anything for us this year, but um, might in the years to come. And I think those were the so the the main one. 150 down from 225. Yeah, it was at 220. You mean P minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from 225 to an average of 150 minutes during the, during the school week. So is that essentially two class periods? Uh, it would be three. 150. Oh, even the, the reduction. Oh, the reduction is a yeah. 75 hours, so about two. maybe one and three quarters. And really, I mean, the way our schedule is, I'll probably reduce it by about a class and a quarter, uh, which means you know, but it's uh, the main change is um, it's an average uh, as calculated over the duration of the school year. So, could I be could I have a fee for a semester? It's kind of you know, in our current model, what does that look like with that average to 150 minutes? Uh, over the course of the year, that would be the way we do it. Not, you know, kind of a, I suppose we could also do an every other day kind of deal. Uh, that gets complicated really quickly. Yeah, but it is something that they change. So, um, the Wesleyan Charter Review I started on today. So remember, I do an annual review of them. I met with them a week or two ago. Uh, last week on Tuesday, she gave me her annual report. I started writing up. Um, the report, I will get it to her by Friday. It'll be on the July school board agenda. Um, you know, it'll, it'll be short, a couple pages. It'll include my write up of a couple pages, her report that she submits to the district each year, and the checklist that we kind of go through um, everything. And so, again, I'll get that to them by next Friday. It'll be on July board meeting. And the last thing I've mentioned as I started the handbook adjustments. For 2324. Um, typically, the board approves the handbook, probably be July also. And I'll just point out um, any significant changes. There's lots of edits and tweaks, and like the temperature thing in elementary school health room best practice is now 100.4 degrees instead of 100. Uh, the most significant thing I think it changed in the student handbook is the no fees. In 23 24. So, at all levels, there'll be no required fees. Um, so, we're changing all of that language. When I, I've done three buildings, the only one I haven't done is the high schools. I'll do that next once it gets done. Again, I'll share any of the changes with you that are significant in July and approve the handbook. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Thank you, Ms. Number 22-23 slash 12 in the amount of $39,563,295 at with a uh, tax rate of, uh, sorry, <laughs> at, at the rate per 1,000 of assessed value of $4.82. Two point four cents okay. uh, in the amount of two million five hundred eighty six nine hundred ninety nine for debt service for general obligation bonds. I'll second that. 
All right, we have a motion and second for the resolution. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries four to zero. Um, next up is our discussion time for Alliance Update, Mr. Story. Well, we have a new Mr. Story. Mr. Story is our new Mr. Beeson. <laughs> so this is him. Well, hello, it's me all. Um, I am just standing briefly to introduce uh, the rep from Alliance Systems. This is Brad Stiltman. He's going to explain a little bit about the maintenance agreement that we've entered into with Alliance, which should go a long ways towards helping us work on the things that have been deferred maintenance and getting those into actual maintenance. So, this was great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. First thing is, uh, why I'm pretty excited to get an opportunity to do this for you guys. Um, it, it, it's something we want to work into to where we become kind of part of the, the team. And uh, how it all started is we've been coming out and helping with the facilities repair base wise. So we're coming out, we're doing repairs, trying to get things working, and then we get another call. And our text kept coming to me and saying, man, these guys are bleeding, they're bleeding. <laughs> and um, we got to help them. So I said, give me your ideas. And the biggest thing was, what if we can get maintenance out there? We could get to where we get maintenance agreements out there and we start maintaining it, get our arms around it, and start finding out what exactly is every issue, how do we get that fixed, and then how do we continue to not have those issues? And how do we, and so what we did is I, I came out, did a full uh, survey of each school, looked at every piece of equipment, wrote down model numbers, serial numbers, belt sizes, filter sizes, everything that's going to need to be done, the size, the tonnage, coils, uh, boilers, you know, just, just everything. And then as a team, we get together and we figure out what's it going to take for us to make sure this. Um, is going to get done and get done properly. And probably it's our standards, but also manufacturer standards. We do take those into consideration, but our standards at times may be a little higher than that. Um, and then our big thing was, you know, also it's one of the reasons we kept coming out and doing it, it's for the kids. And if they're going to school and it's wintertime and it's 60 some degrees in the classroom, that's not good. The other thing is we want to make sure we're getting the quality air into, into the school and into the rooms. Those type of things. So what I did is get together, we put we put a plan together, and we come up with how many hours is it going to take per school to do what needs to be done. Um, and the neat thing is, it's two of the guys on this thing that we're working on. They are your friends out here, the neighbors. Um, we have two or three guys uh, on our on our staff that uh, actually live out here and have kids going to school out here. So. That's kind of neat, and the, the dedicated rep is one, so that'd be nice. But um, so the number of hours that we're going to um, put to use out here, the high school, for a year, we will put in 406 hours of maintenance. It's a large facility, a lot of equipment, a lot of maintenance, difficult maintenance, and some of the, the units are up in tile ceilings. So you use a ladder, you got to get up inside, you're working in very small areas. We're going to try and get all that to where you know we've got that handy. Um, the middle school will be 144 hours of maintenance. Uh, the Elmira Elementary School will be 156 hours of maintenance, and the Need Elementary will be 134 hours of maintenance. Now, our first time out here, we, we, we were lucky to get this finalized so that we can get on top of this while the kids are gone and out of school. And our first thing that we'll do is we will come out and our techs will go through every piece of equipment, maintain it, clean it, re-double check model numbers, serial numbers, filter size, belt size. They're, they're a lot more expert than I am, but I think I did 75%. <laughs> but they'll find some things, which is my hope. And uh, so we'll get that, we'll get that done first. And then also along with that, they will have suggestions for repairs. Um, maybe even some replacements. Um, now, if that is the case, what we want you guys to know the reason why we wanted the maintenance agreement also is it is less dollars for us to come out with a maintenance agreement and work on things than it is without. You're not paying a higher 
feeder truck charger, any of that. That's one way we were able to start making it to be, make more sense. The other thing is what we do is we have 24 hour service, 24 hour service, our response time is two hours. However, we got Derek that lives on Jeans Road. So I think we can get him more than that. And a couple others do in the area. So, um, but the other thing is warranties. We, what we've done as a company to help, because we don't do residential, we specialize in schools, commercial, and industrial. And what we do to help people out is if we do a repair on a piece of equipment for you guys, you're going to get a year warranty on that. On the repair. On the repair. And then say we do need to replace a unit on one of the buildings. We replace that unit. You're going to get a two-year warranty instead of the one-year factory warranty. We're going to add another year warranty under that. Reason is, is back in the 70s, 80s, even early 90s, these things were like battleships. They didn't. They weren't. They, they lasted. You, you know, they're not made the way they used to be anymore. And what we over the years, what we found out is, gee. Month 11, we're starting to have issues. <laughs> month 12, month 13, you know, and they, they just, especially for a school district or a nonprofit, they've just put in a budget to have us do this. And now we're going to go to them and ask for more money. It's a little difficult. So we've added another year to the warranty to hopefully help that. And then in turn, what we're going to do, our tech team down here, they're going to do that. And we're, they're going to come up with suggestions. And the suggestions are going to be how long do we believe? This unit has until it may need to be replaced. And then we can get, we'll have all that information, and then we'll get cost on what that would cost to replace it. And we can start helping you guys with budgeting down the road. Um, that's part of being the partner here with you guys. And the other thing that we noticed with how they have not been maintained, I honestly believe from what I've seen over the years doing this with other schools, other big commercial properties, with good proper maintenance and the right timing and everything and, and cleaning, I think you guys will see a 10 to 15 percent savings in energy costs. They're just going to run with more efficient. And then also, when we add, if we do need to add new equipment, you're going to get more efficient equipment. So we couldn't even see a bigger increase there. But I think it's going to be positive. Um, I'm pretty excited to see how it all comes out. And hopefully the kids are pretty excited and be a little happy next year. <laughs> any, any questions? So I am curious, how come Elmira Elementary has the highest number of hours after the high school when it's a new, a relatively new school? The equipment. Ah. It's bigger and newer. It's a, it's a lot more. Um, Complicated equipment, it's more efficient, but but along with the efficiency, comes more to do. And things like that. Yes, yeah. it comes more to do it. And what that's the other thing too is that we, we all we're going to work. We're working on control. We're going to be working on the control systems and they to make sure that all that is um, lined up and get it back online to where James can keep an eye on it and know what's going on with each school. That that's our that's our ultimate goal. Yeah. Um, this sounds wonderful, but I have a question. Did I understand you to say that the um, the equipment that we have hasn't been properly maintained? I would say that I don't know that it hasn't been properly maintained. I think it's been tough to maintain this amount of equipment with with um, what was with the way it was being done and being done. There is a lot. It's just changing filters on this equipment. Mm -hmm takes hours with how much there is. And so I, I wouldn't say the effort was there, mm -hmm. definitely. And and the filters were getting changed, but not maybe, you know, you get you could get to where if you had, if the if the and they had a guy doing filters, he gets done doing filters with all for two he's back at doing filters <laughs> to stay ahead of, you know, to where the to where we have the good air you know and everything. And then what about cleaning coils? When's he got time for that? So we're coming in to try and re release that pressure. And, and the one thing that that does, if, if you take a pie chart and you look at certain things like we, we do, you know, you look at replacing equipment, there's a cost there, repairs, there's a cost there, there's cost of energy, you know, all this. There also is administration costs or in-house costs, we like to call it, 
we're going to shrink that in-house cost down some because they're going to be able to concentrate and do more of what other things would need to be done for the school district. And we're going to help take that off the, uh, the shoulders and reduce that. They did the, the, reduce that in house costs. Yeah. What is the company? Alliant, A L L I A N T Systems. Okay. And the other thing about this, you guys, is we, North Eugene High School, the new high school, we mm -hmm. did the whole, we did all that. All the new stuff that's happening in Springfield this, this year and it's getting going right now. We're, we are the ones doing all that. Any of the new University of Oregon buildings that you see, we've done that. So we do all the construction also. We have teams that do that. We have plumbing teams. We got a plumber that's totally out here. We are on it. So we don't have to worry team. about going about everywhere else. Now we've got four other inputs. The other thing it does, it helps cost less with the guy paying the bills. The guy paying the bills, the person paying the bills. They're going to one place. It's not going here, there, and other place. So we just cut her work down so you can concentrate on other things. And I don't think I'd add is, you know, for so long, we had one person in charge of all these systems. And, you know, I don't know how many hours he adds up there, but it's like a full time person. Mm -hmm. You know, were we maintaining them to standard? I'm sure we weren't. Right. I mean, I don't get that time. When we, when they were coming around two years ago, my kind of this came on our radar, this seems to be a problem. They were finding filters that hadn't been changed in eight years. You know, or a, a hole in a vent where we've been heating the attic. Well, now all these things have, over the last two years have probably been fixed. There's no doubt this last school year, we were the most efficient we've been in the last 20. Now, is there still things breaking? Yeah, the stuff's old. We haven't bought a new unit in a long time. Um, but, you know, for us, for, for the things that they're doing, you know, whether it's uh, how many times a year we change the filters? Four? Four. Yeah, we've never changed four, four times a year. Um, blowing out the coils, that was probably as a as needed basis. They're doing it every time. Um, and, and we're going to have someone alongside of them, you know, their con our contract with them, I think is around $150,000 for this first year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, well, we're, they're doing everything. And we're going to definitely get some folks that in the years to come can take on some of that. We can help them. Uh, so we'll get somebody trained in making sure we're using the exact right size filter that it's pointed the right direction. I've seen lots of pictures of, oh yeah, your filters are in here, right? They're all backwards, you know, um, just to make sure that, so anyways, they're gonna do everything with this issue, whether it's changing belts in the cycle and, and um, maintaining things, uh, like you said, you know, giving us information on long-term needs and talking with, um, with Alliant. Uh, last time we met, he identified kind of the middle school units as being, the most, uh, uh, you know, probably the next one we're going to need to buy. We've set aside money in a reserve account, 23, 24, to start building up this money. Each one of those is a quarter million dollars. Um, so it's, you know, they're not cheap. But the, this, this is a great opportunity for us to, you know, we're not coming in one that we want to help. And the neat thing is, is if we can figure it out, and you know, we've got to weigh it out. We talked about it here, but if we can get to where we can get somebody that can do the filters and they're they're feeling good about it, they know where they're at, and they know how fast they can get it in, and they know they can get it done, and then maybe even teach them how to change belts, we cut that cost down from what we know. We can take care of the bigger headache. But and, and maybe we can save them all right there. But it's not really way out. Yeah. Yeah. Coming. yeah, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then you can get to James and he can yell at me. And all right. Great. Uh, um, all right. We'll move Did on. Do you have to... something else? I saw you raise Oh, I was just going to make sure you marked it. Maybe to grab them. No, it's oh, okay. okay. Nothing <laughs> more. Um, uh, we'll move on to approve the agreement with the OSBA um, contract. Do you have anything else to talk about? Or you basically done here? No. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of tweaks, probably 20 different language things, the most significant things, you know, the dollars um, are uh, what our folks are, our, our financial package to our OSEA folks is as competitive as anybody in Lane County. The difference for us that makes it a little bit difficult is we pay 
significantly more to insurance for our employees than any district in Lane County. We're the only district in Lane County that has vacation pay for our classified employees that are not 12 months. So um, our starting salary has been low, you know, compared to others. Um, so we started to close that gap at the same time. You know, like I said, our total financial package to our classified folks is uh, we we'll compete with any school district in Lane County. That was the biggest change here. We agreed to 3.9, 3.9, 3.9 in year two, three, and four. And in year one, the uh, base pay increase was a dollar amount. Uh, for some classifications, it was, I think, $1.25. Is that right? And a dollar for others, which equated to about 9 to 11 percent. Um, also solidified the index, made it consistent across all the columns. It'll be a lot easier in the years to come. Um, so overall, it took a lot of time, but overall, I'm pleased with where we ended up. That required more action. I make a motion to approve the Oregon School Employees Association Permit Chapter 35 with Lane County School District 28J, um, the agreement. I'll second that. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 We'll get that scan here up on the website this week. Probably. All right, so next up is the uh, proposed uh, board meeting calendar for next this year. I think you've probably all seen this. If there's no questions, then we need to take action on it. I move that we approve the 23-24 uh, uh, board meeting calendar as published. Well, second. We have a motion to second. Do we have any other discussion? Hearing none, all those favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, good timing, Ms. Marshall. You are up for your curriculum. Perfect timing because if you get in the car, they're like, Prince, be quiet. I'm going to have to get on Zoom here. <laughs> okay, so for math adoption, are you going to pull up that page? Um, so this is what was on the website, and this is kind of a very similar process to what we did last year for English language arts. So we started in September. We actually started last last summer because what happens is your publishers and your ESCs and all of the people that do professional development want to get in and start talking to you. So we started a lot of that work last summer. In September, we met with our team. So we had a K-5 team, 6-8 team, and a 9-12 team. Our 6-5 team was pretty big because we had reps from both elementaries across all grade levels. And then also specialists like our title folks and our principals. Middle school and high school were just the departments, so the math departments for each place. And so then what we did was we came together early in the fall and we had a micro PD from our Lane ESD specialist, Maddie Ahern, who is also on Oregon's like state math council. So she's really knowledgeable, she's very familiar with the standards and what's out there and what works. So she came in and talked with each of the teams. Then what happens kind of January, February, the teams brought in, it ranged from anywhere from 10 approved ODE curriculums to 16. So the teams have to kind of like go through that, choose their top two or three to really dig into deeper. So the biggest thing that we did first was we tried to just get rid of a few. So that was our very first thing was like, what can we just say no to? So we first narrowed it down to like seven or eight. Then we looked a little bit more, and then we narrowed it down to our two or three that we wanted to take back to our staffs, share with folks, uh, do more, get, we did online meetings with publishers, we got quotes, we got samples, some of the teachers taught samples in their class, um, and then around May, I put out this document, and so each of these has the video of the presentation, so you can watch that, there's parent information pages, there's demo accounts that people could log into, and if we scroll down a little bit, so each one we did that for. And then we also had a community engagement feedback form. We got one response and it just said, I hope you had teachers on the team, which of course we do. 
and they didn't leave any uh, contact information, which I said that they wanted me to reach out to them. They couldn't do that. So I don't, I feel like everybody feels really good about it. Every building is going with their top choice. Nobody felt like, oh, we couldn't get on the same page and they had to argue it out. Everybody went with their top choice. So that's where we're at. Um, K-5 is Savas and Vision. Uh, 6-8 is Mid-School Math. And 9-12 is Open Up Resources. So 9-12 is a little bit messy just because that's where the Oregon State Standards were the most impacted at the high school level because they're moving to a two plus one model. So two plus one means you have to have your core algebra, geometry, and data. And then your plus one, which is your third year of math, instead of going algebra, geometry, calculus, or something like that, your plus one can be aligned to your career choice. So we have a couple different choices for plus one. So that's just, we're not adopting a plus ones right now. So there's lots more work to do there. So I would for need to approve the curriculum adoption. Or any, if you have a question. Any questions? Yeah. All right. It's an intensive process. I'm, I'm ready for something a little bit lighter <laughs> after <laughs> ELA and math and the next year science. So only one response from the community, is that right? The parents or whatever? Yeah, yeah it, 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 the response didn't say like if it was a uh, parent or teacher or anything. It's oh, just, gotcha. They just, do they have any feedback based on this? So just, I want to ask a clarifying question. Mm -hmm. um, at the high school, you're saying that you're buying algebra geometry, but the plus one is still to be determined? Yeah, and we have some plus one courses already. So um, I'm trying to think what they are. Traditionally, the high school model was geometry, algebra one, algebra two. You took every course at the high school, the lowest GPA, most difficult course for every kid that was required is algebra two. Okay. So, so uh, you know, like the state of Oregon recognizes that we did eight, ten years ago and it added in a um, applied math. Well, now they're wanting more of those type of courses. Frankly, not every kid is an algebra two math kid, but can we get a carpentry course? Can we get a statistics course? Other things that meet a criteria that are a little more specific to career mm -hmm. and not simply have kids have to go to algebra two. Um, I move that we approve the uh, all of the math cur curriculums on uh, K through 12. I second the motion. The motion is second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next up is the new curriculum at the high school. I just want to say that I want to. I want to take both of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, Emmy Irwin has come over to about what happens when they want to do a new course of approval. They first they kind of type up this response and fill out their packet, then they give it to the principal to approve, and then it comes over to the DL. So um, both of these are pretty normal procedure. One is criminology and one is mythology. One is a social studies elective and one is an ELA elective. Um, and what they provide is kind of the scope and sequence. Um, and, I, you know, it's based on student interest. You know, they're trying to do what the kids want at the high school that still meets state standards, that's exciting and relevant and engaging and can be tied to um, different courses at LCC or U of O or OSU. And these all, remember, these always come to you when we've never taught it before. So there's often times we'll add a new course. Oh, 10 years ago we taught it, it doesn't come here, but we've never taught it. We used to have a law studies class, which was similar to this criminology one, but different enough. We needed to do this. And mythology is something new. Do we need to yeah. we, um, do them separately? I don't, I don't think so. Just a new curriculum. And that we approve the new curriculum criminology and mythology A and B as stated. A second. We have a motion to second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Carries four to zero. 
All right, next up is our breakfast and lunch pricing. You want to yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that's the, um, but I don't know if you remember pre COVID, we would do this every year. Yeah. And then the last couple of years has kind of been off because we were doing same last summer, um, but we're trying to get back on track <laughs> now. Um, so ODE recommends that the adult milk prices um, are set to cover all the milk cost of the meal, basically. Um, and there's a little tool that they provide us. So I use that to calculate that. Um, so I recommend increasing the adult lunch prices from 405 to 430 and then the breakfast from 205 to 215. And that would of course start at the beginning of the 23-24 school year. And then as far as the lunch prices go, um, the maximum um, increase you can do for a school lunch is 10 cents. Um, so I recommend doing that for now. Um, it's possible that once the new reimbursement rates come out, um, general fund will need to kick in the difference. We, we might be having to do a little bit of catch up because we've had seamless summer the last two years. So, um, but it wouldn't be an increase to the students. It would be an increase to our general fund, which we used to always transfer yeah. general fund money into there. It's just not happened since 1920. <laughs> um, anyways, the prices are listed there, the current ones, and then what the new ones would be for 23, 24. And it seems like when we were doing the, these regularly, it was 10 cents. Oh, yeah, you're, generally, you're it was, time. yes, yeah. Um, I think, think because that's the like minimum maximum requirement by the state. So we always just did that. And then if there was a cost beyond that, the general fund would just pay right. for that. Yeah. So that will be the plan this year as well. And I looked last year, it wasn't released until August, but there were temporary reimbursement rates, which they're hoping to get away from, but that's still lingering on from the whole COVID thing. So, and I don't know that I have that. It's more just the this is what I'm doing. What we're doing. Yeah, I read board policy. There's nothing in our board policy that says you have to, you know, get the motion on it or anything. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Sounds good. Any other questions? Okay. We'll move on to um, 9G, which is the approval of the uh, alt ed programs that our kids utilize, our students. Yep. So these are the ones that are around Lane County where we have, have or could have students. All of these programs are evaluated by uh, typically a, a different superintendent in Lane County gets assigned one. Um, that's the way they get on this list. Uh, so we do this. Up. This does uh, require um, board action, and this will be our list for 23-24. I don't think there's any significant changes. And these programs are if we have to run for our kids out for, for school district. Yeah, or sometimes if a parent requests um, and the IEP team or the school team agrees, um, but usually, usually it's a it's a placement recommendation by the school district that we can't serve them here. Here's some options that we're willing to fund. And we pay for them. We pay yeah. a lot for these placements. But do we track the kids at that point or if they Oh yeah, for still our kids. Yeah. We we that's, we um for example, yeah. Mr. Brands is our case manager for our Fed director is the case manager if they're on IV, which a lot of times these kids are. Um, we go out and administer their state tests if they need help. Uh, so we stay engaged with them and the family throughout the year. I move that we approve uh, the alternate education programs for the 2023-24 school year. I second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? On favor, say aye. 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 Very much here. It's four to zero. Although, Michelle, I did just notice that. Um, yeah, sorry. 
2019, 2020. Yeah, well, before we put this up on the website, we'll fix it. All right, and moving on to personnel, uh, license personnel. Uh, we have a number of items, and we have a couple, a few resignations. And I, yeah, so please do take a, a, a total of four actions. I move that we <laughs> approve both the hiring and resignations of the licensed employees as listed. One second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion carries. And then just for information, our non licensed personnel, we do have a few. Um, also, that we have a few resignations and a couple of retirements, and then some coaches that we have not hired and some that are left. So the hiring of Carson Lane, I have to admit, makes me feel pretty old. Uh, <laughs> I believe that his girlfriend was his girl soccer coach last year. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Oh, was she the head coach or uh, the head coach? Oh, I think that Carson's dad is a sibling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think he probably will. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Our folks that are doing more. <laughs> hiring, I'll get out some thank you letters, notes this week on behalf of the school board. Uh, like, I have a to do list of several folks. I see Pam's other names there for sure. She's uh, one. Is she? Is she retiring for just uh, retired? Right? Yeah, she just uh, retired. We had a lunch over there for a few days. They said she made seven straight up. Yeah, she's already bird watching in Massachusetts right now. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, any later closing comments or late after closing comments? Okay, hearing none, we can Thank you all for being here.